Hey, how are you? Fine. Hey, it's running. It is. Welcome back to another episode of My Legacy Garage. Free car edition. How about a 2000 Dodge Intrepid? Not the usual, I know. But it was free. It doesn't run, of course. Hasn't run in years. No idea if it will run. Did run when parked. Might run again? neighbor has had this car for as long as I can remember. It came with keys and a title, and according to the title, they've had it since 2003, which means they've had it for 20 years. They haven't driven it for quite some time now. They got new cars, this one kind of got put to the side as a spare, and then they just kind of forgot about it. Took the places off of it, dropped the insurance, let it sit there in the driveway, and then the town said, you need to put plates on that or get rid of it. And that's where I come in. I got rid of it. The lady and gentleman that owned this car are from a different generation, a little bit older. Before, it was a throwaway mentality in the country. You would make things last. You bought something and you kept it until it was absolutely used up. And that shows. This car is well maintained. It's clean inside. It's been sitting for at least five years, maybe more like ten. And it's still clean. Let me show you. I have never in my life gotten an abandoned vehicle with such a nice, clean, well-maintained interior. In addition to that, creative fixes in order to keep it on the road. You just don't see this kind of ingenuity anymore. I don't really know anything about this car. I don't know how many miles are on it, for sure when it was last driven nothing but i do know that i'm going to try and get it to run and then we'll figure out what we're going to do with it from there let's get started first order of business get rid of leaves the first hurdle that we have to overcome is the hood won't open looks like it got hit by something or hit something here and Smashed it in pretty good. I don't know if it's stuck or what's going on, but uh, I've got a plethora of tools here. Let's see what we can do. The pull cable just doesn't do anything. I'm going to see if I can see what's going on in here. It's very much latched. Like the pull cable hasn't done anything, which makes sense because it's probably broke somewhere. Maybe even right up here. So we've got to figure out a way to pull that pull cable and release the hood latch. Because I don't see any way to do it from here. It looks to be internal. I think we're going to have to jack it up and try to get to it from underneath. That should be sufficient to look underneath there and see what's going on. Get a jack stand under it just to be safe. All right, now that we're all nice and safe and everything, let's take a look under here and see what we can see. Here's a look at that latch assembly. This piece in here is what's difficult. As you can see, it's not even all the way open right now, but I managed to get a screwdriver up in on the back side of it, which you can't even see, but from the bottom and just pop it open and the hood released. So that's a plus. So what we've got here is a 2.7 liter and the battery is probably in a wheel well on one of these. That's a negative jump start. That's probably positive. Oh, there's the battery. Way down in there. I guess that's the next step, ain't it? First things first, let's get the air box out of the way.
Air filter doesn't look terrible. That rubber is a little stiff. There you go. And now there's the battery, which looks like it needs to come out through the wheel well. I went on a little mining expedition here and managed to get the battery out of down in there. You got to take this little cover out of the liner here and remove the air box and the battery has to come out sideways. It's very interesting. So let's grab battery, get in this thing and see what comes to life. I wish I was going to be able to show you all more of this, but there's barely room for me to even get this battery down in there, let alone show you all what's going on too. And of course the tricky part is going to be not touching posts against metal while we're doing this. So let's see if we can figure that out. There we go. You got it, you know, sorted down in there anyway. Now let's put the negative terminal on. Which you can barely even touch down here. Go, yeah, it's on ish, good enough anyway. Try to work the battery into the box. Okay, and then pause it. Seems to have some sort of power. Let's go see what comes on. I suppose before we try and turn it over, we should make sure it's got oil in it. It does perfectly good. Signs of life. 166,956 miles. Let's see what happens. All right. Wow, no way. There is no way that was just that easy. It's even got half a tank of fuel in it. Huh. Well, that was pretty anticlimactic, wasn't it? Just like that, it's alive. I suppose we should get it down off the jack and see if it'll move next, right? And stop. Stop would be good. Well, let's clean some of this up and make that happen. Brake fluid is a little bit low, so we're going to add that. It's probably got a blown line or something somewhere. But we'll at least give it a fighting chance here. And I can't see if it's got any fluid in it or not. I didn't expect it to start already. Trans fluid looks good. Alright, let's see if it moves. Window work? Yep. Sweet. Got no brake pedal at all. Got gears. No brakes whatsoever. And it's like it's got a blown line right up here somewhere. Yep, right there. Okay. Cool. Hey! Hi! Hey, how are you? Fine! Hey, it's running. It is. It's all the time I have for today, but we will revisit this next time I get a chance. This car seems like it wants to live and might as well help it out, right? See you when I see you. It's been a minute since we Yeah, I don't know what to tell you. Holidays. It's winter now. Full blown winter and it's cold out here. But we need to do something with this car, so that's what we're going to do. Step one is going to be cleaning the snow off of it. This is a mess. Uh, yep, there we go. Well, that just about figures. It's a little chilly out. Hood struts don't want to work, especially not with the added weight. Man, it is cold out here. I'm saying it is cold, cold. 
Not like Canada cold, like some of y'all, like, forget that. Negative 40, are you kidding me? But it's like 20, that's pretty cold for here. Suppose we need to get a pair of vice grips to hold the hood open. Engine's still there, that's good. Alright. I know, you might be thinking, don't you have a heated garage? And the answer is yes, yes I do. But the problem is it's full, and I mean chock full of everything. And the other issue is, well, that car doesn't have any brakes, and that'd be kind of sketchy trying to move it around in the snow. Plus, you know, that heater, it's really loud, and you can't run it while you're recording for a video. So, I might have a solution for both of those problems. Yes, there's a heater in here. Yes, it's running. Yes, it's at least above freezing in here, and yes, it's very loud. However, we're going to do something else. Now that we've got the noisemaker shut off, let's crack into this box from Vivor and show you what we've got here is a diesel heater. Runs off 12 volt, good for, you know, in a garage. Now then, when you first open the box, this all looks scary and complicated. But it turns out it's really super simple. As you can see, pictured very clearly in the diagram that they give you. It's pretty cool. All right, let's uh, let's put some fuel in it. Light it up, see what it does. Using, I wish you a safe journey. It talks to you, that's intriguing. So you just push the old power button and it powers up. You can see it's, it's had power to it now for 12 minutes. And it's seven degrees Celsius in here, fun. It does talk to you, like I said, start heating, stop heating. Apparently it tells you to have a nice journey when you shut it off. This really is for, you know, inside of a truck or a car or maybe a piece of equipment. I can see where this would be great if you were operating a, an older piece of equipment, maybe a farm tractor or something like that, that didn't have a heater. Man, this would be the answer in a heartbeat, let me tell you. So let's go ahead and get it fired up to see what kind of heat output we get. And in case you were wondering, that's what kind of power it's pulling. Last feature we're going to go over is it comes with a remote control, so Stop heating. turns it on and off. It's pretty snazzy. While this is intended to be installed in a vehicle or a piece of equipment, I think that it would work really well with like a little homemade carrying case and uh, maybe rig up a cigarette lighter adapter or something for the power that you could just carry it around portably, plug it in, boom, you have heat, you're good to go, mount the fuel tank to the side of it. I think that's what I'm going to do with it, but not today. I'd like to thank Vivor for sending me this heater to try out. I'm going to put it to good use. Works really well. Pretty simple to set up. I like it. Now for those of you who are enjoying the randomness here, here's another little tidbit. Keen observers may have noticed the LeeCParts.com box up here. Now, if you watch YouTube a lot, you know he's got a YouTube channel, Scrap Life Garage. It's awesome. He does crazy stuff. And he's actually not far from me and I stopped by there and picked this up because there's a new project so projects not the right word indulgence perhaps let me give you a quick little itty bitty sneak peek and then we're going back to the Dodge it's not the Grand Cherokee however it is in the garage behind me any guesses drop it in the comments below while you're at it hit the like button Helps us out a little bit, lets people know, hey, the video is worth watching. And uh, subscribe button if you want to see what this is and, you know, what other projects we get into. We've got our trusty broom holding the hood up here. I didn't want to mar the struts up because they did work when it was warmer out, I think. That brake line is way down in there. Comes off the master, has these little flexi lines. Goes way down. You know, this is the problem with modern cars. You just... You can't get to anything. It's insanity. Do I really want to mess with this? I mean, honestly. What am I going to do with this car? What am I going to do with this car? I mean, I don't really want it. I just took it because they needed it out of the yard and it was free. It runs. It moves. I guess somebody could use it. Probably would be an okay, you know, beater car or whatever. Hmm. Let's think about this. We're back over in the at least, you know, above freezing garage though. It's still cold in here. I think 
the plan with the Dodge is to sell it as is. Real cheap. Sell it to somebody who can get some use out of it needs a car. Uh, it needs brake work. Um, I was poking around with it out there after that last little segment, but it was too cold to hold the camera in my hands because I can't feel my hands because it's cold out. Anyways, uh, rotors are pretty bad on it. It needs pads. It needs gone through, which would probably not be a lot of money, but I don't see any reason to put time and money into a car that I've got no interest in doing anything with. So we're going to put it up for sale. Runs, it moves, needs brake work, has a title. Happy days. Come and get her. So that's going to be the end of the video. I appreciate you all following along. I know it was a little off the beaten path for the normal stuff, but let's be honest, we've gone further off the path than that. I appreciate everybody watching. Please give us a like and a subscribe, and uh, we'll see you next time.